What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, and I am excited to dive into the finale of the reverse diet with y'all. So I have been reverse dieting now for 20 weeks, and I am filming this at the end of that 20-week block. So the reverse, reverse diet has officially ended. So I'm going to kind of make this video a summation of the prep and reverse diet in its totality. Um, so kind of give y'all starting and ending factors here and just paint a picture as to what the all-inclusive view of it is because this literally has taken place over the course of an entire year from the start of the prep to the conclusion of the reverse diet so this one's going to be a little bit more involved a little bit more in depth and i'm going to be bouncing around a little bit here so just bear with me but i think this will be a good resource for y'all to kind of just paint a picture as to what the overarching goal of a properly implemented prep cut reverse diet and building phase should look like so from the top my protocol involves a seven phase strategy you know i've got phases one through five which is all uh, competition prep related losing body fat focused phase six and seven is the reverse diet and then returning to a healthy baseline and beyond the beyond being the building phase which should ideally last longer than the prep itself and i am now going into that building phase having just finished my reverse diet uh, but from the top, I just want to kind of dive in and show you all this from a graphical standpoint with the spreadsheets, from the calories, from the composition, show you some pictures, show you some changes, and then show you what is going to be taking place going forward. So diving into the spreadsheet, uh, if y'all can recall from the very beginning, I started the prep on April 3rd, 2023. That was week one. I weighed 182.1 pounds and my calories were just under 3,000, so 29 six five on the calories at about that 80.4 percent fat ratio now from a body composition standpoint i started uh, my dexa was showing 14.3 percent my calipers had me at 9.04 percent and my in body had me at 15.5 percent that's what my composition was according to those metrics the dexa also had me at 67,960 grams of lean tissue and to show you real quick uh, some pictures these are the starting pictures so I'm just gonna kind of cycle through these a little bit this is what I look like at the very onset of the prep uh, at 182 pounds 67,000 grams of lean tissue and about um, 14 and a half percent or whatever I said on the DEXA body fat wise so that's what I'm looking like there uh, definitely got fullness, definitely stuff some definition, but don't have near the definition as I do, obviously, in the depth of the cut. So that's what I look like at the onset of the prep. And again, I was consuming about 3,000 calories there at the onset, which was pretty close to my maintenance, maybe a little bit shy of that. My maintenance is probably, I don't know, I mean, right around 3,000, 3,200, 3,300 calories at the onset of this prep. So that's what I was looking like there. And then going back to the spreadsheet here, um, I went down, had five competitions, as y'all know, dieted down. My lightest weight was recorded at uh, 151.2. So I went from 182 to 151.2 at my lightest, and that was on November 3rd of last year. And I had started incorporating some of the ketogenic caloric refeeds at that point. The lowest recorded average calorie intake was... Uh, let's see here, about 1860, I believe. Yeah, 1860 was the lowest average I had in calories for a given week throughout the entirety of the prep. So 1860 calories, which is pretty low by my standards um, for me, but 1860 calories daily is not that low compared to what a lot of competitors compete at. There were several competitors that were significantly bigger than me that I was talking to backstage, and they were dropping their calories down to like, 1300 1400 calories for a male that is competing in a light heavyweight division and is carrying 30 40 pounds more mass on their frame than i was so for me to be able to only drop down to 1860 calories i think is a pretty pretty big you know bonus because i have that energy coming in and i'm still able to function my mental acuity is still on point i'm still relatively healthy now from a blood work standpoint um as i've shared with y'all hormonally my blood work definitely like a prep is very hard on hormones as i've hopefully illustrated throughout this, especially if you do it naturally um so my starting total testosterone was 537 that dropped to 169 
And then the lowest it got was 86 uh, there at the depth of the prep. So incredibly low. Now, my energy was still pretty solid. I still felt fine, but 86 is obviously not optimal from a total testosterone standpoint. Since then, incorporating more food in the reverse, it's been basically doubling every time I've gotten blood work. So it went from 86 to 165, then to 297. And I got blood work done uh, about a week and a half ago. I have not gotten those results back yet. I'm going to do a standalone video on those results. Uh, I'm going to have the doctor come on the podcast. We're going to go over them in great depth. But I anticipate it will have doubled from that 297. So I would imagine it's probably around 600 or so now. So we will see when those results come back. But it's basically been doubling every time I've gotten blood work since incorporating more food, gaining a healthy body fat back, and just bringing that back up. But before I talk about the reverse diet, uh, the depth of my prep saw me at 151.2 pounds, 1860 on the calories at the lowest. And But again, that's... You know, I'm starting to in increase ketogenic caloric refeeds at that point. So that was only 1860 for one week. The rest of it was, you know, 1900, 2000, 2100, 2200. Uh, so much higher on a weekly average basis. My DEXA scan had me at 3.9 to 4.1%, depending on how you look at the averages. It kept rounding up as I got leaner and leaner. Uh, so as it was broken down by a body part, it was showing 3.8, 3.9% body fat, and it would round up the total to 4.1 for whatever reason. So that's what the DEXA was showing. Calipers had me at 3.47% body fat, and then the in-body bottoms out at 3%. So I was just perpetually bottomed out at 3.3% body fat on the in-body, so the bioelectrical impedance scan. Um, now I started increasing food from that point, obviously, and then with regard to the prep, before I talk about the, the reverse diet in its totality, I did five shows. I think I probably looked better. I looked best, I think, at my uh, first Washington show, the one that I actually went pro at in October. I think uh, my fullness was there a little bit better. I'm pretty sure my weight at that show, let's look here. My weight at that show was 155.6 pounds. And I think that was probably my best looking physique was that 10, 14, 23 show, the one that I went pro at. Uh, and then I had two shows thereafter where I was competing as a pro, one at 154 on November 5th, and then one at 152.3 on November 19th. I was leaner then. Uh, in that November show, those two November shows, but I think my actual physique looked better in the October show. I just had a little bit more fullness. Again, I wasn't as lean, but I think I had a little bit more fullness, and that boded well for my overall appearance. So, you know, as is true with all of my competitions, I'm consistently the leanest guy on stage, but never the biggest guy on stage. So my whole goal with competing going forward is to just put on more size and be on the higher end of my weight bracket. So going into the reverse diet now, that was a 20 week long process, which just concluded. And I've been steadily ramping up calories that entire time. I was incredibly structured with my increase in calories the first several weeks. And then I got a little bit more and more flexible as the weeks progressed. And as I continually put on body fat um, at a healthy rate, I was trying to average about a pound increase to a two pound increase per week. And I held that pretty close for the first several weeks. Um, and then I've been, you know, steadily gaining since then. But going now to the conclusion at week 20, I'm pretty much stabilizing at about 190 pounds. So my body has pretty well stabilized at the time at the time of this recording at 190 pounds. If I'm traveling or I'm having a massive bolus of sodium, it may fluctuate a little bit beyond that. But 190 is pretty much where my body is stabilizing at this point, and I'm consuming. Uh, you know, between 4,500 and 5,500 calories a day. So my average intake as of this past week at week 20 was 5,000 calories. So 2,000 calories more than I was consuming at the onset of the prep. And my body's holding stable at 190. And, you know, you think 190, I've probably got quite a bit more body fat than I started the prep at because I started the prep at 182. But that's not really the case either. I got a DEXA scan at the conclusion of this reverse diet, and I'm at 190 pounds. Like I said, uh, I was 186 on the day of the DEXA scan. That had me at 13.1% body fat on the DEXA, 8.57% on the calipers. So um, that is still lower than what the caliper was reading at the onset of the prep. 
and about a percentage point lower on the DEXA than at the onset of the prep. And then my in-body's got me at 16.5, whereas the in-body had me at 15.5 in the beginning. And that's probably because I'm just having more fluid fluctuations right now because I'm eating more food variety and I'm a little bit more volatile with my sodium intakes throughout the day. So that's going to be a little bit more, uh, that's going to cause more flux in the in-body results. But uh, what's interesting is that I've actually got more lean mass now than I've ever had. So you typically lose quite a bit of lean tissue and some actual skeletal muscle tissue in a prep due to the, you know, crazy low deficit uh, and just being incredibly depleted. But I've actually now at the, you know, finale of this reverse diet have, according to the DEXA, 72,180 grams of lean tissue. So that is up quite a bit from the 67,960 grams at the onset of the prep. So I'm finishing this reverse diet with more lean tissue than what I started the prep at, which is all, you know, very good. And to be able to do so at the heavier weight of 190 pounds, feel very good about that. And the leaner composition of 13.1% body fat via DEXA versus the 14.3% feel really good about all of that. To give you all some context here, let's go back to the pictures. So again, this was me at the very beginning of the prep. All right, so here I am in October, obviously, pretty freaking lean at this point. My face is sunken in. I've got all the striations in my legs, my back, my abs are super tight, core is dialed in. I got a little bit of a tan on now too, which helps. Just pretty freaking peeled at this point. All the separation here in the hamstrings, the quads, the obliques, separation in the delt caps, between the biceps and triceps, striations in the shoulder or the chest here rather. Uh, and then again, a much leaner face as well. So this is what I'm looking uh, towards the end of October uh, to give you some reference here. And then now, all right, so here are the pictures at the conclusion of the reverse diet. Uh, so obviously much more filled out than I was at the depth of the prep. But via the DEXA scans, this has got me at a leaner composition than I was at the onset of the prep and carrying more lean tissue than I was at the onset of the prep as well. So still got the, the visible abdominals, still got some separation in my shoulder caps. Uh, obviously, most of my body fat is being carried here in the lower back. Um, but, you know, this kind of being the composition that I'm going to try and hold more or less for the building phase, I can totally live with this. This is a reasonable composition for a building phase. Still got some separation in the quads. Uh, and again, still some separation in visible abdominals there. So this is what I'm looking like at the conclusion of the reverse diet at 190 pounds, 13.1% body fat, and consuming on average about 5,000 calories. So this is where I'm at now going into the building phase. And to really just kind of drive home the whole goal of cycling through these seven phases in the correct manner, you want to improve your starting and stopping position each time you cycle through these phases. So if I started at 14.5% body fat, 3,000 calories, 182 pounds at the beginning of this prep, got down to 151, 3.9% body fat, and the lowest intake of 1860 calories, and now I have reverse dieted back up to a leaner composition than I was at the onset of the prep, more weight, more lean tissue, more strength, more power, more performance, but at a leaner composition, then the next time I cycle through a prep, I'm going to have more caloric runway to taper from because I'm consuming significantly more calories than I was at the onset of this prep. And I've got more lean mass on my frame. And I'm not going to have to diet as hard to get even leaner than I did this last competition, competitive season. So that's the whole goal of cycling through these phases properly. Important caveat being that you spend ample time in a building phase. Yes, I've got more lean tissue now than when I did at the beginning of the prep, but if I cut down right now for another prep, for one, that's not giving my hormones and metabolism much time to stabilize, but for two, while I do have more lean tissue now than I did at the onset, that's not going to be a significant increase in lean tissue to be visually, you know, making a difference on stage. So that's why I'm going to spend the next several years in a building phase at a higher caloric intake, focusing on progressive overload with my training and getting things truly dialed in uh, and optimizing for more you know, muscle building potential 
so that when I do lean down at some point in the future, I look significantly better than the last time I competed in 2023, and then ideally be at the higher end of my weight bracket as opposed to the lower end of my weight bracket. That is the beauty of this protocol, these seven phases. You cycle through with a structured plan. You get better each time. You get leaner each time. You have more muscle each time. You improve your metabolic threshold, hormonal baseline, and caloric threshold each time. So you've got more calories to work with. You don't want to have to diet down to poverty macros beyond what is a healthy rate to go into. Uh, so the more calories you have to work with, the better. And for me to be able to consume 5,000 calories on average right now, maintain that 13% body fat, and continue to see progress in the gym, I feel really, really good about that. And I'm going to continue to focus on getting that dialed in. So going forward, now that the reverse diet is complete, I'm going to be focusing on just building as much muscle as I possibly can over the next several years. Not sure when my next competitive season will be. It may be in three years. It may be in five years. Who knows? But I want to make sure that I spend ample time in a caloric surplus and in a building phase so that when I do step on stage again, I look significantly better than the last time I stepped on stage. So that is the goal there. That is the plan. That is the reason I've developed these seven phases, this protocol to help guide people through it in a structured, sustainable manner and truly get better with every month and year that passes because that is what natural bodybuilding is at its core. Uh, you can make it a very unhealthy sport, but you can leverage it to be a very healthy sport. And if you do so with a well-formulated ketogenic diet and a structured plan, then congratulations, ladies and gents. You have successfully stumbled upon the fountain of youth, and you can get better and better as each year passes. So that is my plan. I appreciate you all immensely for sticking with me throughout the prep itself, throughout the reverse diet. Hopefully, I've put forth enough information for you all to take actionable steps with and just enlightened y'all in the process, inspired, educated, motivated y'all. I love this. I'm super excited to keep getting better and better with it, and I'm excited to keep adding as much value to you as I possibly can. So thank y'all again for tuning in, and we will talk to you next time throughout the building phase.